Ubisoft confirms the, prison Persia, the Prince of Persia, the Lost Crown team, has been disbanded. Over the course of the last week, the alarm was raised over Ubisoft seemingly disbanding the team uh, at its Montpellier studio that worked on Prince of Persia, the Lost Crown. In new statements from the company and its leadership, that seems to be true, although it doesn't suggest there have been any sort of mass layoffs that go along with the action at this time. Ubisoft confirmed the move of its Prince of Persia, the Lost Crown team in a recent statement to Eurogamer, also posted on its social media, according to senior producer uh, Abdelak Elgis, it was a matter of moving the team onto new projects. Most of the team members who worked on Prince of Persia, the Lost Crown, uh, have shifted to other projects that will benefit from their exp expertise. We know players have a love for this brand and Ubisoft is excited to bring more Prince of Persia experiences in the future. I want to start with a huge thank you for all the love you have shown Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, and that you have loved the game as much as we do. With that, here is a message from our senior producer, um, Abdelic Elgis. The current plans for The Lost Crown are to launch it on Mac following its recent release on Steam. Regardless, the rumors have gone round that sales of Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown were not up to expectations. Yeah, because it got like no fucking marketing. <clears throat> And that this stopped the possibility of a sequel cold. It's a shame considering the Prince of Persia The Lost Crown was well reviewed, especially here at Sha uh, Shack News. However, the Prince of Persia brand has also has a lot of iron to the fire. That was Sands of Time remake, still, still supposedly in development, and the rogue Prince of Persia currently running through early access. Regardless, it's a shame to see the Prince of Persia The Lost Crown didn't get more love. Stay tuned for more updates of the franchise at Ubisoft Montpellier right here at Shack News. Yeah, it's... <clears throat> This is wild to me because this game, um, it didn't get like a, a big marketing push, and everybody that I've seen talk about the game think that the game is fantastic and like literally like the best thing that Ubisoft has put out like in the last like five to six years. Um, but like very few people bought it and played it, <clears throat> and it, it's what it, the other thing that baffles me is that this is like one of the very few groups inside of Ubisoft that had any kind of goodwill. Um, from the players. I mean, at this point, I can't think of any group inside of Ubisoft that has any goodwill with the player base. Can you, I mean, can you think of anything? I Like, maybe Rainbow Six? Maybe? Yeah. <clears throat> really, just Rainbow. That's the only thing I can think of that might have some goodwill. But I'm just like, why would you... Because that's the thing, like, the more goodwill you have, the more shit in terms of not just like, you know, DEI kind of bullshit, but like monetization kind of shit. Because Ubisoft is one of those companies that's very well known for nickel and diming its player base, you know? Um, mm -hmm. It's like, but the thing is, it's like if you have really goodwill with your audience, you can, the more you have, the more you can get away with in regards to both of those things. So it's like, yeah. why would you get rid of the one group inside of Ubisoft that had any goodwill for your company? You know, like if they if they had said it out, it's like, hey, our uh, the Lost Crown team is cooking up a sequel or another entry or literally anything. People would have been like, oh, I'm interested, you know, because the Lost Crown was good. And people liked it. Um, it did have a little bit of a controversy because the protagonist was not Persian, he was just a black guy, and he had, like, the stereotypical, like, ha like look, he's got the stereotypical, you know, dreads to the side that you see in, like, every young black character in media these days. Um, but they were like, yeah. and he's not, the, he's not a prince, either. So it's like, wow, the, the, this Prince of Persia game uh, has neither a prince nor Persia in it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, it's wild. It's kind of a problem. Um, so, like, people kind of ragged on it from the beginning, but after it released, um, the people who played it, um, including people who criticized it and, like, gave it a try anyway, they're like, let me give this thing a try. They were like, huh, this game is actually pretty fucking great. Um, it reviewed really well. The player base really liked it. But it didn't get a big, a, a good marketing push. And, um, you know, that it had some controversy from the beginning that I just described. And it's like, god damn, dude. Like, it just seems like, like this decision wasn't made by a gamer or a developer. It 
feels like once again the decision was getting is getting made by some spreadsheet obsessed, you know, CFO, you know, corporate dickhead who isn't a gamer, doesn't understand the industry, and, and just looks at everything as just numbers. So he's like, oh, this studio made a game that didn't make its budget back. Uh, they must therefore not be good. We're going to get rid of them. Or we're going to disperse them into the company. You know, it's like, that's a pencil pusher decision. That's not a gamer decision. And uh, as a result of this decision, uh, they got some shade thrown at them by the Baldur's Gate 3 publishing chief. Um, the Baldur's Gate 3 publishing chief calls out Ubisoft's broken strategy. If gamers need to get used to not owning games, developers might get used to not having jobs. Damn. <laughs> that is an amazing statement. Um, Larry and director of publishing Michael Dels, uh, never one to be shy about speaking his mind, has spoken his mind <laughs> about Ubisoft's decision to disband the Prince of Persia, the Lost Crown development team saying it's the result of a broken strategy that prioritizes subscriptions over sales. Um, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, is quite good. Uh, PC Gamer's uh, Molly Taylor uh, felt it was dragged down by a very slow start, calling it a slow burn to a fault in an overall positive review, and it holds an enviable 86 aggregate score on Metacritic, despite that... Uh, Ubisoft recently confirmed that the development team has been scattered to the four winds to work on other projects that will benefit from their expertise. You know what this kind of reminds me of? It reminds me of... Mm -hmm. Remember when... Uh, oh, who was it? It was... Was it Microsoft? Who got rid of a bunch of studios, including... Uh, they got rid of Tango Gameworks, the people behind Hi-Fi Rush. I think it was Microsoft that did that. Um, and everybody was like... What the hell are you doing? And then I think like some some other developer just bought out, just bought they like they got rid of Tango. And some other developer, gosh, it might be like Square Enix or someplace like that. They just hired them all. Like after they got dumped by Microsoft, because they're like, what the fuck did you just dump this team for? It's an amazing team that produced an amazing product that made yeah. a lot of money. Um this that's what this reminds me of. So uh, they mean Assassin's Creed Shadows, that's why they mean with the other projects that need them. Yeah, I mean, what other projects do they have going on right now? I know that they have, don't they have a Rainbow Six Siege project in the works? I think they do. Um, I don't think they're doing anything with Far Cry right now. Um, I've heard that they're doing a Splinter Cell game, but I don't know anything about it. And it, it might actually be a remaster, I can't remember. I know that they're remastering Black Flag right now. That's because that's supposed to release next year as well. Um, but I, but like you said, villain, probably is Shadows because remember they they delayed it specifically to like polish it up. Like they might have like needed those bot needed those like talented developers to actually like go in and actually polish this game up. I don't know, but the thing is, it's like. Prince of Persia is a is a 2D platformer kind of game. It's not a big open world, you know, exploration kind of game like Assassin's Creed is. So I don't like what bugs could they be squashing, helping squash? You know what I mean? Like how familiar are they with that code base? I I don't I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> let me see here. Uh, da, 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 the, this juice feels. Uh, let me read that. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, this juicy feels is at least partially the outcome of Ubisoft's focus on subscriptions over conventional game sales. The whole feeling comfortable with not owning your games uh, thing espoused by Ubisoft director of subscriptions Philip Tremblay earlier this year. And the decision to stop releasing games on Steam, which is far and away the biggest digital storefront in PC gaming. Now, that's interesting about that is they seem to be reneging on that because... They're releasing Shadows Day One on Steam. Um, they're bringing they they're bringing Outlaws to Steam next month, I think. But and I think that after Shadows going forward, they're going to be releasing on Day One on Steam Day One, I think. 
Um, they seem to be coming... They seem to be crawling back to Gabe, which happens all too often, it seems. Um, you know, it's another case of Gabe does nothing, wins. You know? <laughs> um, the last notable game by their platform was arguably Far Cry 6 in 2021. I don't know about that. Say it again? I said I don't know about that. The game was mediocre. I can't hear you. You're like... <laughs> I said that game is mediocre! Oh, yeah, yeah. It is mediocre. It was... I don't... I, God, did I finish it? Yeah, I did. I did eventually finish it, but man, it... Oh, I had to put it down like a couple times before I was finally able to finish it because it was just so... Like you said, mediocre. Um... Let's see, the crew, Mirage, and Avatar came in 2023 and didn't perform. So you can assume subscriptions were at a lull when Prince of Persia released by 2024, which means people wouldn't be launching their store at all too much. Uh, if it had released on Steam, not only would it have been a market success, but there would likely be a sequel because the team uh, is so strong. It's such a broken strategy. The hardest thing uh, is to make an 85 plus game. It is much, much easier to release one it just shouldn't be done as it was. But as well received there and elsewhere, holding a very positive user rating, but that far down the road, the proverbial win was out of its sails, and decisions about a sequel and the fate of the dev team were presumably already locked in. The statement, uh, if the statement games gamers should get used to not owning their games is true because of a specific release strategy, uh, subs above sales. And the statement developers must get used to not having jobs if they make a critically acclaimed game platform strategy above title sales is also true, and that just isn't sensible even from a business perspective, Dow's wrote. Yeah, and he's he's completely right about that, because it's like here's the thing, like if I'm a developer, if I'm at any kind of job, right, logic would dictate that my performance should be the primary indicator as to whether or not I get fired, or I move up the, the ladder of progression within my particular field. Right? That's what I expect as an employee. You know? So when you have a business strategy that basically removes that and says, no, the quality of your product doesn't matter in regards to like your retention as an employee, then guess what? Uh, your employees are going to abandon you. Either they're going to abandon you or they're not going to care about the quality of the game that they make. Because it's like, well, if, if my performance isn't tied to the quality of the product that I make, then why should I work harder to make a better product. The business structure basically incentivizes all the wrong things. Hmm. That's what he's saying here. And he's completely right about that.